We interrupt the news to learn you some literature. As ever on Fridays, let me close with another selection from the canon of James Thurber, humorist, reporter, essayist, cartoonist, the renaissance man of American humor in the 20th century. It was to my late father I first read these stories. He suggested I read them to you. Tonight's story comes originally from The Middle-Aged Man on the Flying Trapeze from 1935. I'm reading it from the works of James Thurber, 92 stories, published by Longmeadow in 1985. And I'll dedicate it, the title anyway, to Alvin Green of South Carolina. Guessing Game by James Thurber. An article was found after your departure in the room which you occupied. Kindly let us know if you have missed such an article, and if so, send us a description and instructions as to what disposition you wish made of same. For lack of space, all lost and found articles must be disposed of within two months. Lost and found department, Hotel Lexington, Lexington Avenue and 48th Street, New York, per R.E. Daly. Dear Mr. Daly, this whole thing is going to be much more complicated than you think. I have waited almost two weeks before answering your postcard notification because I have been unable to figure out what article I left behind. I'm sorry now, I didn't just forget the whole business. As a matter of fact, I did try to forget it, but it keeps bobbing up in my mind. I've got into an alphabetical rut about it at night. I lie awake naming articles to myself. Bathrobe, bay rum, book, bicycle, belt, baby, etc. Dr. Prill, my analyst, has advised me to come right out and meet you on the subject. So far, I have been able to eliminate for certain only two articles. I never remember to take pajamas or a hairbrush with me, so it couldn't be pajamas or a hairbrush you found. This does not get us very far. I have, however, ransacked the house, and I find that a number of things are missing, but I don't remember much of them, if any, I had with me at the Lexington that night. The vest to my blue suit, my life insurance policy, my Scotch Terrier genie, the jack out of the automobile tool case, the bottle opener that's supposed to be kept in the kitchen drawer, the glass top to the percolator, a box of aspirin, a letter from my father giving my brother William's new address in Seattle, a roll of films exposed for a 2A Kodak, my briefcase missing since 1927, etc. The article you have on hand might be any of these, with the exception of the briefcase. It would have been entirely possible for me, in the state of mind I was in that Friday, to have gone about all day with the automobile jack in my hand. The thing that worries me most is the possibility that what I left in my room was something the absence of which I have not yet discovered and may never discover, unless you give me some hint. Is it animal, vegetable, or mineral? Is it as big as I am? Twice as big? Smaller than a man's hand? Does it have a screw on top? Does it make any kind of regular ticking noise when in operation? Is it worth new as much as $100? $1,000? $0.50? It isn't a bottle of toothache drops, is it? Or a used razor blade? Because I left them behind on purpose. These questions, it seems to me, are eminently fair. I am not asking you to uh, some of the others I could think of, such as, does it go with the pants and coat of a blue suit? Can it bark? Can I lift the wheel of an automobile off the ground with it? Can it open a bottle? Does it relieve pain? Is it a letter from somebody? Does anybody get any money out of it when I am dead, providing I keep the payments up? I think you should let me know whether you are willing to answer yes or no to my first set of questions, as in all games of this sort, because if you are just going to stand there with a silly look on your face and shake your head and keep repeating, can't guess what it is, can't guess what it is, to hell with it. I don't care if it's a diamond ring. I take it for granted, of course, that I really did leave an article in the room I occupied. If I didn't, and this thing turns out to be merely a guessing game in which the answer is Robert E. Lee's horse or something, you'll never be able to answer your phone for a whole year without running the chance of it being me, reserving dozens of rooms in a disguised voice and under various assumed names reporting a fire on the 23rd floor, notifying you that your bank balance is overdrawn, pretending in a husky guttural that you're the next man the gang is gonna put on the spot for the shooting of Joe the Boss over in Brooklyn. Of course, I'm a little sore about the thing the way it is. If you had been a guest at my house and had gone away leaving your watch or your key ring behind, would I send you a penny postcard asking you to guess what you had left behind? I would now, yes. But I mean before this all happened. Supposing everybody did business that way. Supposing your rich and doting uncle wired you. I'm arriving Grand Central sometime next month. Meet me. 
or worse yet, supposing they, instead of issuing a summons naming a definite crime or misdemeanor, the court sent out a postcard reading, I know it's gonna happen to you. We'd all be nervous wrecks. The only thing I see to do right now is comply with your request for a description of the article I left in that room. So, it is a large and cumbersome iron object, usually kept in a kitchen drawer, entitling my wife upon my death to a certain payment of money. It barks when in operation, and unless used when the coffee reaches the boiling point, will allow the liquid to spill out on the stove. It is signed by my father's name, is sensitive to light, relieves neuralgic pains, and is dark blue in color. I have, of course, the same suspicion that you seem to have, namely, that maybe the object wasn't left behind by me, but by somebody else who occupied the room before I did or who occupied it at the same time I did, without either one of us knowing the other was there. And I'll tell you why. The night that I was at your hotel, the room clerk took a message out of my box when he reached for my key. The message was for Mr. Donovan. I looked at it and I said it didn't belong to me. You haven't a Mr. Donovan with you? He asked. I said no, but he didn't seem to be convinced. Perhaps whatever was left behind in my room was left behind by Mr. Donovan. I have an idea that after all, Mr. Donovan and I may have occupied the same room since his mail was in my box. Perhaps he always arrived just after I had left the room and got out each time just before I came back. It's that kind of city. I'm glad, anyway, that I have two months before the article is returned to the insurance company or sent to the pound or whatever. It gives me time to think. Guessing game. That's Countdown, portions written by James Thurber. Our best wishes to our stage manager, Jackie Pilewski, who escapes us tonight from maternity leave. Play the kid lots of good movies. Rachel's one-hour special on the first 53 days of the Gulf disaster is next. I'm Keith Olbermann. Good night and good luck.